The wait is over. We're finally back with another episode of Hot Topic. Your man G7 was busy in another dimension. Anyways, as always, click on the captions button if you want or need subtitles. This is Gary7MT for the GTA Series Videos crew. And in this video, we're continuing our series focused on beta and removed content in GTA. With this episode, we're moving to one of the most beloved cities in all of GTA lore, the infamous metropolis known as Vice City. Born as an expansion pack, think DLC, for GTA 3, Vice City briefly changed Rockstar's plans by becoming an entirely new game, one that led to the series' stellar cast of voice talent. This is a disaster! We are so screwed, man. A bumping soundtrack that can only be described as orgasmic. This is emotion, breaking hearts and saving lives every hour of every day. You see, I'm your doctor of love, Fernando Martinez. And thoughtful and magnificent sets that faithfully pay tribute to 1980s culture. As of today, Grand Theft Auto Vice City has sold over 20 million copies worldwide, making it the fourth highest selling video game for PlayStation 2 in history. Released just one year after the series' 3D debut, Vice City underwent a lot of changes during development, though most are more conceptual than visible. Before we begin, we want to give big shout outs to Vadim M, Mr. Jago, Rarusk, Ragnarok, Mr. Darkle, TJGM, Spooferjack, and all the guys who tirelessly dig through the Vice City rendition files locating beta, removed, and edited content. It's thanks to them we can still see and play Vice City with most of that content. Oh, and if we overlooked anyone, sorry about that. If you send us a message, we'll add your name in the video's description. But enough of the preamble ramble. Let's get down to the real deal, starting with the city itself. Due to the low streaming capacities of hardware back in the day, Vice City consisted of two main zones, Vice City Mainland and Vice City Beach. When we're in one of these areas, the other is rendered in low resolution and allows us to see the differences between this version and the final one. By using this trick, and also thanks to the VCSR map under Sunshine Autos, we can see how the city changed. Washington Beach was originally smaller. The bridge between Leaf Link and Little Haiti was curved. And neither the Hyman Memorial Stadium or the Lighthouse existed. While the Vice Point Mall was just a suburban area. Another area that changed a lot was the airport where we can see the famous Ghost Tower, the second air traffic control tower. All the Fort Baxter area was just part of the airport with a fourth long runway, a second tower, and a couple of hangars with no routes for civilians. Also, thanks to subtitles and audio still in the game files, we know that a deleted mission from Avery Carrington in a zone based on the Florida Keys called Gator Keys was planned. Why this piece of real estate was removed from the game is unknown, but maybe, and this is just a guess, a strip of land with a long bridge over a lot of water was not exactly good for a character who couldn't swim. Speaking of characters, as it was in GTA 3, Vice City characters have undergone a lot of reworking from the initial sketches to the final version we see in the game. From Ricardo Diaz, who was named Fernando Diaz, to Ken Rosenberg, who was originally intended to be older. Steve Scott looks more perverted, and Kent Paul was initially conceived as a classic English guy next door type. Avery Carrington hasn't changed much except for his clothes, and thanks to a sketch, we know that at some point, Rockstar considered Eddie Murphy to define Lance Vance's appearance and maybe even to voice him in the game. We also have preliminary sketches of Tommy Versetti, based more on Al Pacino than Ray Liotta. The whole game pays homage to Scarface, so Rockstar probably intended to add another tribute to Brian De Palma's masterpiece. 
Additionally, other early character designs show the evolution of the love fist, B.J. Smith and Pastor Richards. Staying on the character tip and the aforementioned unused audio files, there are several phone conversations with Mercedes. Tell me it's me. Hi, Mercedes. Tell me I'm so bored. When are we going to have some fun? What do you mean? Well, I know you're busy fighting and killing and corrupting people, but I just want to have some fun, so don't forget about me, okay? Tommy, I heard you killed Ricardo Diaz. No, there was an unfortunate fire at his mansion. I think he might have burnt to death in his acrylic shirt. Tommy, I'm so proud of you. I knew you were a real man. It was an awful trouser stain of a man. You make me so proud to be your friend. I know you're going to be busy trying to take over this town, but don't forget about me, you hear? Tommy, it's Mercedes. I'm lonely, really lonely, baby. Please come and visit me immediately. Okay, bye. It's Mercedes. I no longer love you, Tommy. I no longer do. Honest. Because you're no longer nice to Mercedes. You're no longer treating me like a lady. You ignore me and I hate you. I insist you come and see me right away. Bye. Tommy? Hey, Mercedes. Hey, indeed, Mr. Tough Guy. I'm really angry with you, Tommy. Never make me hang out with Jess Torrance again. He's pathetic. Halfway through, he starts crying about his doggy. He dies when he's seven years old and that his mommy never loved him. And Tommy, he wears a wig and a bra in private. I am not very happy with you. I'm very, very angry. Goodbye. Other removed phone calls involve Colonel Cortez, Kent Paul, Phil Cassidy, Ken Rosenberg, and Ricardo Diaz. Hey there, Tommy. You're going to love me, mate. A little birdie told me that Vice City SWAT Division has a deposit box at a certain rather large banking establishment where they keep all the bribes they've taken over the years, like some kind of old boy's retirement fund. Of course, if this information should ever help you acquire any of that cash, I guess you'd feel obliged to push some of it my way. I'll bear that in mind. Thanks, Kent. It's Paul. I'm from Kent, near London, you prat. Whatever you say, Kent. Tommy, the wound is healing well. Funny thing is, I have fought in six battle zones and always walked away without a scratch. And now this, one arm Phil. Still, I got me a healthy selection of one-handed firepower, so I'll never be unarmed, Phil. You hear? Anyway, son, cut out the sentimental crap and go buy yourself a drink. You hear? Hey, Tommy, I thought you might need some business advice. Once you've got the operation up and running, you'll need to drop by and take the week's cash. Let the guys think they got the run of the place and they'll be shaving the profits, okay? I know how to handle business, Ken, okay? Okay, okay, I know, you know, I was just, you know, telling you I know that you know that I know. Just keep it a chart, baby. <sighs> keep it a chart. Oh, yeah. Whatever, Ken. Whatever. Hey, Tommy, man. Why you not love Ricardo no more? Come see me, man. I got some good shit going down. These audio files allow us a glimpse into the game's other aborted missions. For instance, there was a mission from Interglobal Films and Steve Scott. Tommy, look, I, I've got, I need to ask you a favor. Steve, how's filming going? Oh, it's going fine, fine, yeah. We need a car chase scene, and, uh, well, the budget can't really stretch to it, so, uh, I've left some wheels at the airport. Uh, you know what to do, huh? Okay, Steve, I'll keep an eye out. Catch you later. A similar mission was added to GTA Vice City Stories, in which Victor is to drive a car around the city, followed by a helicopter, while doing stunts for a TV commercial. Another missing and unnamed mission stems from a deleted character in Vice City called Mr. Moffat. Thanks to the in-game files, we know that this person was to be some kind of businessman who escaped from the police. We suspect his jailbreak was aided by Tommy during the mission No Escape, where we have to lure Cam Jones out of the prison. Later in the game, after buying the assets, Tommy receives a call from Mr. Moffat. Why the character and mission were deleted is also unknown, but perhaps like Darkle and GTA 3, they simply didn't fit the game's climax. Next we have a mission not tied to a character, but a place. This one involves apartment 3C in Ocean Beach. Apparently, at some point during development, a mission ordered by Sunny uses the apartment as the end point that later becomes a safe house for Tommy. While the mission's goal is unknown, a little imagination, coupled with the fact that Sonny is the boss and all the mess in the bathroom, suggests that that's where Tommy found the commando who fucked up the deal at the beginning of the game. Perhaps Tommy killed the three people, but the money remained unaccounted for. 
why this mission was removed and why apartment 3C was never used as a safe house for Tommy again is also unknown. Other abandoned missions exist, but even less is known about them, other than the fact that Pastor Richards, Donald Love, and Mercedes ordered them. Like the side mission involving the Trash Master that was later added only in GTA Liberty City stories. To complete it, all you have to do is go around collecting trash. Yet another phone call is from an unknown person and tied to the Sunshine Autos business. Mr. Vecitti, I have here a signed piece of crap stating that you have taken on all of BJ's used auto thefts. With BJ's sudden disappearance, I have no choice but to hold you responsible for his financial insecurities. Until this account is settled in full, you should consider Vice City Streets to be very unfriendly. Vasetti, where's my money? Hey, Vasetti, I told you to pay, you prick. Vasetti, you prick, pay up! This led us to yet another dropped feature from the game. Loan Sharks. Added later in GTA San Andreas, Loan Sharks would act in Vice City exactly as they do in GTA San Andreas, sending goons to kill the protagonist. Other removed features are the MC Tommy outfit, obtainable inside Howlin' Pete's Biker Emporium, and the ability to bet on horses and more at Inside Track in Vice City. Like the Loan Sharks, this feature has been added to GTA San Andreas. A radio station called VCN, Vice City News, was cut, along with dialogue from Kenny Loggins, probably an on-air personality for this station, judging from the fact that Loggins became the DJ for Los Santos Rock Radio in GTA 5. Staying tuned on radio for a bit longer, in the game files are also even icons for each station, including VCN. Now we know you've been waiting for the really good stuff, cars and weapons. So here's the lowdown on those. Apparently, in-game vehicles were originally meant to be counterparts of real life ones. This concept is clearly illustrated when one compares game vehicles with real ones. The Phoenix lights and badge were similar to the 1981 Pontiac Firebird. Sentinel and Sentinel XS resembled the BMW 5SE23 and 1986 M6, while the Infernus was practically an exact replica of the Lamborghini Countach just like the Sabre Turbo was of the 1970 Oldsmobile F85. The same can be said for almost all vehicles in GTA Vice City, but two big examples of riffs on existing vehicles are the Blister Compact and the Deluxo. The first was modeled off the Honda Civic CRX and was a lot closer to it at the initial stages of development. And thanks to another Rockstar title, Manhunt, we can still appreciate the original model of the Blister Compact. Textures named Civic 86 can't be found in the game files, while the final textures have been renamed Blister C86 in GTA Vice City. The other vehicle, the Deluxo, was heavily inspired by the 1982 DeLorean DMC-12. Its taillights, headlights, and even grill after losing the front bumper, are all closer to the DeLorean than the final Deluxo. Police cars and enforcers had different color schemes with the first vehicle looking the most like its real life counterpart, the 1985 Ford LTD LX. Certain models were originally meant to be the same ones used in GTA 3, like the Cheetah, but here we have some dropped vehicles too. The best known is the Cougar, a mid-state evolution of the Virgo based on the 1984 Mercury Cougar. Another is the Coast Guard version of the Maverick, which was completely deleted from the game like the Train and the Karuma, among others. Speaking of deleted content, weapons are the main feature of the game that change significantly from the beta to the final version. Moreover, the beta had a lot more weapons, a silenced coat, a Desert Eagle shown during the mission The Shootist, an AK-47, a Steyr Aug, a grenade launcher, and the same landmine that survived the cut from the GTA 3 beta. 
Content inherited from GTA 3 and Vice City include a slightly different Uzi called Old Uzi, a shotgun, and an M16. Both models' textures were corrupted by the way and the guns dropped from the game's final version. Some weapons also had different models like a snub version of the Colt Python, a shorter version of the MP5 shown during the game's intro scene, and a silenced Ngram Mac-10. Joining these goodies were a couple more melee weapons initially meant to be part of the game. A taser, a nail gun, and staple gun. Of course, these last two could have been intended to be used only as props. But weapons, as we said before, changed also after the first release of GTA Vice City on PS2. In the 2.0 version of the game, many were changed, from colors and other small details to names. The Colt 45 became a pistol, the Python renamed 357, and the Spaz shotgun was renamed the Spaz 12. Other transformations included turning the Ngram Mac-10 into the Mac, the Uzi 9mm into the Uzi I, the MP5 into the MP, the Ruger into the Kruger, and the PSG-1 into the 308 Sniper. It's unknown if someone at Rockstar officially requested these changes, or if the developers did it to prevent litigation from the manufacturers of these real-life arms. From the original 1.40 version through 2.01 and later the 3.0, also known as the Haitian Cuban friendly version, other things changed in GTA Vice City after its debuted in stores. Together with the renamed weapons, the 2.1 version also fixed various bugs, a less blurry effect during the mission Boom Shine Saigon, as well as some other minor tweaks and a couple of missions to make them easier. Sadly, we also lost the Lionel Richie song Running With The Night from the Flash FM radio station. The 2.1 version also saw Rockstar delete the tear gas grenade, a decision probably made because the weapon was not only hardly used, but slowed down the frame rate in both console and PC versions. Now, Rockstar is no stranger to controversy. We know that. GTA Vice City was also the game that triggered Jack Thompson's fury and his passionate hatred towards the Grand Theft Auto series as a whole. The 3.0 version of GTA Vice City is most maligned for its Haitian-Cuban controversy. Hello, is this Mr. Tommy Versetti? Yeah. Well, I hit through the minor grapes. You are the man when someone's got a vermin infestation. Yeah, maybe. Well, I got a real vermin infestation. Haitians everywhere. My name is Humberto Rubina, and I want you to meet me at the Cafe Rubina as soon as you can. Cause I tell you, these damn Haitians have gone too far this time. In 2003, on a show called Shame on You, Arnold Diaz ran a piece on Vice City focused on how part of the game was to kill Haitians. Immediately, the Haitian community responded with protests outside New York City Hall in effect forcing the Haitian president to meet with U.S. authorities. The aftermath saw Rockstar Games not only make an apology, but change a number of scenes, dialogue, and phone calls by removing all the Haitian and Cuban references. In the end, these ethnic groups were simply absorbed into gang members. Don't just stand there, you pricks! Chase that Haitian dickhead down! Don't just stand there, you pricks! Chase that dickhead down! Now recently a Haitian gang lord died. Apparently the Cubans did it. Nobody's certain, but let's make them certain. You disguise yourself as a Cuban hombre and head on down and crash that funeral. Mix it up, and then hightail it. You getting this down, Donald? Now recently a gang lord died. You disguise yourself and head on down and crash the funeral. Mix it up and then hightail it. You getting this down, Donald? Papi! Who grab Lorema? Back to my son, what happened? The Haitians! I hate these Haitians! 
They messed with me for the last time. This, this is, we'll take them out. Only we need some backup. I lost a few hermanos already out there. Amigo, you drive good. For a woman, right? This is no time for joking. Come on, drive for me again. Take my boys over there, and then we'll take these Haitians down. But they mess with me, they mess with the biggest boy in town. Well, we're gonna have a problem hey, here, amigo. Man. Good to see you can make it. This stinking nest of Haitians, we're gonna kill them all. Charge! Papi, no problem, Papi, problem. Roberto, my son, what happened? Un grave problem. They messed with me. They messed with me for the last time. What is your problem? We take them out. Only we need some backup. I lost a few hermanos already out there. Amigo, you drive good. For a woman, right? This is no time for choking. Come on, drive for me again. Amigo, take my boys over there. Or they mess with me. They mess with the biggest boy in town! Hey, amigo! Good to see you can make it! You wanna mess with me? You look like someone I... I... The Cubans have fast boats they use to cross the seas with drugs. It is their livelihood! You look like someone I... I them have fast boats they use to cross the seas with drugs. It is their livelihood. Just in time, man. While it's not our purpose or place to comment on the value or timing of the Haitian protests, we do feel that any group that feels insulted, mocked, or disrespected has the right to protest anywhere at any time. As far as Rockstar is concerned, their changes proved logical and optimized gameplay by keeping the missions intact. For our money, editing a few words to prevent a Pierre nightmare was wise. It ensured nothing in the game could be taken as racist or offensive to any particular ethnic group. So, in conclusion, we've seen how GTA Vice City was born as a minor project that grew to rapidly become not only a bigger, better game, but one of the most beloved titles of the entire franchise. We also learned how being as a direct successor of GTA 3, not much of the technical or graphical aspects of the game changed from beta to the final version. Despite this, we still have game files, entire scripts, and hints on removed content, missions, mapped areas, and more. And with that, you have it for this episode of Hot Topic. Keep following us because in the next episode of Hot Topic, we'll examine the beta and removed content of the biggest chapter of them all, GTA San Andreas. This is Gary7MT for the GTA series videos crew saying goodnight guys.